This is the new KD camera mount for FPV cine lifters. It's fully carbon and no CNC parts here, so it's lighter, cheaper, and it's available now. I'm going to show you some of its features. We've got the KD camera mount, and you can see it's adjustable all the way from zero up to about 43 degrees. These arms here actually fold into the top plate and go in these slots here and then sit flush in order to keep the whole thing lower profile. And you've got plenty of room for a strap underneath here and around the camera if you need it. You've got the big quarter 20 slot going all the way through the middle. You've got thick, strong six mil carbon here. Everything's nicely chamfered, all edges, super clean. Um, you've got laser cut foam pads on the bottom and obviously on the camera plate side to keep everything locked in. Uh, all the screws are flush, everything is very strong and rigid and you can select your angle smoothly and then you have a choice of two different arms so you get both included so the, these are also included in the kit um, and these have these notches from 10, 20, 30 and 40 degrees and you can choose to use these instead and then lock at those different angles. I prefer the smooth ones because I can adjust to any angle I like and also overall the design is a little bit stronger with these smooth ones and you can use that washer in there um, but the choice is yours and both are included in the kit and you'll see how that all goes together with the assembly instructions later in the video. Attaching the KD camera mount to any drone is super easy. Anywhere you can fit a DAC you can fit this because it has the same mounting holes. It comes with two lengths of screws, you've got 8mm and 10mm M4 screws and they use the same 2.5mm driver so you just put that on the holes there mount it on and then you've got holes in the front as well to put the driver through for easier access just like that and then these slots here in the back for easy access as well and once that's on you can adjust your camera mount to wherever you want and then simply these four screws with the same two and a half mil driver mount in like that, screw those down tightly and then super solid really rigid mount and then you've got the foam as well uh, once you mount the camera with the quarter 20 to keep that nice and solid from moving anywhere um, and then yeah this this whole thing is really nice and solid and you can see very easily adjustable just those four screws and easily taken off as well you've got access to the screws there and also through these two holes here so the kd camera mount also works really well with these quick release plates this is the small rig one and it can easily just mount in there with those two quarter 20s really secure really solid and then on your camera, you just have this plate here. And then that just slots in there. This closes. And you can see it's super secure. Um, and you have easy access to adjusting these four screws for your camera angle. And it holds very well onto there. And gives a really nice clean access mount for you to get to everything. So the KD camera mount is very similar to the DAC mount uh, which is this CNC aluminium version and I wouldn't knock this as a great mount. Uh, the thing is they're quite hard to get in Europe and especially the UK um, imported from America so I wanted to create this one that was more available for us over here um, and also the KD camera mount is a little bit lighter overall but they both share the same mounting pattern these holes here uh, so you can mount Anywhere you can mount the DAC mount, you can mount the KD mount. You can also see the DAC mount comes in 110 grams. The KD mount comes in at about 76 grams. Um, so there is a little bit of weight saving here. Comparing these two mounts in terms of black box logging, you can see here the red line and the orange line are the DAC mount and the KD mount. And they are basically exactly the same um, on this test here. You can see they have similar sort of peaks. And that's just from the drone that I was using it on. Uh, but yeah, basically the stiffness and performance is very, very similar. Um, but KD mount here is all carbon. No CNC parts here, which allows it to be a little bit cheaper. Um, and it's also lighter. With the KD camera mount, you get these two bags. And in the first one, 
we've got the two carbon plates here, top plate and the bottom plate. And we've got these uh, foam pads as well. And we'll put those on at the end. So I'll put those over there. And in the second bag, we've got all the hardware, various screws that we need. And we've got the rest of the carbon. I'll put those over there. So you get two options for arms. Um, you have these arms here, um, which have these notches in them. And so that gives you 10, 20, or 10, 20, 30, and 40 degrees um, in increments. And then you've got these solid arms with no notches. And these uh, will allow you to just go smoothly to any angle you want. Um, these are a little bit stronger um, and they are uh, a little bit better performing on resonance. Um, but these give you uh, options to lock at certain angles if you want um, without having to check. And then we've got these pieces here. Um, you notice there are two different types. You get five of each. Um, you only need four of each, but there's a spare. And you have the small hole um, and then the one with the bigger hole. That's where we're going to put press nuts into. So we've got five of those there. And then five of these. We've got two of the arm types. Um, I'm going to use these arms for now. Um, but the assembly is exactly the same with these. And I'll just put those over there. We dump out all the hardware. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is mount these pieces onto the bottom plate. And on the front, we're going to have the ones with the larger holes. Those are going to go in here. And on the back, we're going to have the ones with the smaller holes. So if we start with those, these are going to slot in here like this. And for each one, you want to take one of uh, these little M3 nuts and you're going to put it in here like that. So they're going to go in and they should be a tight fit. Um, so you might need to sort of push it against the desk a bit to get those properly aligned in there. And then once you have it aligned properly, it should look like that. You've got that in there. like that. And then we're going to put it in here like this. And then this is the three mil piece. So we're going to take our M3 by eight countersunk screws. And we're going to put one of those through the bottom here like that. And then just use a two mil driver and screw that in. Nice and tight, don't strip it, but just nice and tight. That will be flush, and then you can see that has gone into the nut there, and then that is really strong. The very strong connection there, um, but quite simple, so very effective. Now we're going to do the same thing on the others as well. And if you get the alignment, sl alignment slightly off, if you notice when you tighten it down, um, it sort of pulls everything together and puts it all in the right position and makes them all, all nice and flush. So we're going to use these ones with the bigger hole on the front. So now the bottom plate is basically finished. Um, we've got the two small holes at the back, the two big holes at the front, and it should look like that. The next thing we're going to do is put these press nuts in. So you can see these small nuts and they have the little teeth on them. And then we're going to take one of these M3 by 10 socket head screws. We're going to put a washer on here and make sure the sort of uh, rounded side is in towards the carbon. Then you, you won't mark it up as much. We're going to put that through there. Put the press nut on like this. And then two and a half mil driver goes in, in there. It should basically just align itself up. Tighten that all the way and then take this out. And then you can see that press nut's been nicely inserted in there. And then do the same thing on the other side. 
and then we can just put that aside for later. And that's the bottom plate finished. So we'll put that aside and then we'll come onto the top plate and you can see the same grooves on there and it's exactly the same as the bottom but the other way around so we've got the two small holes at the front and two with the big holes at the back and again it's the exact same process putting these M3 nuts in here can be a bit fiddly but once you get them in it's all right and then this time we're going to use the M3 by 12 screws to go through because this is six mil carbon And with this one, it actually touches against the top of here to keep it really secure. Whereas the bottom plate, there was a gap. Then again, we're having the ones with the big hole on the back of the top plate. And sometimes like with that one, it's, it was a bit hard to put it in by hand but as soon as you get that thread connection and you start tightening this down, it really just pulls it in and locks it all together and now it's super solid. So one more of those. Then we're gonna do the same thing with the two press nuts here in the back. And we're gonna use this screw with the washer that we did before. Okay, and the top plate is finished. So that's a nice and flush along here. So now we're going to put these two halves together um, and we're going to go from the back first. So this just slides in here and then we're going to use this same M3 by 10 socket screw with a washer on there and that just goes in here. It should be reasonably tight fit to keep it all secure. That goes in there. Two and a half mil driver to secure that in and then same thing on the other side. And then you don't need to tighten those all the way down, but that gives that hinge in the back there, so that can move around. And then we're going to come onto these arms. And again, I'm using the solid arms here because I prefer them. They're a bit stronger, but if you want to use these notched arms, it's the same thing. Just make sure that this is the left-hand one. So this is going to go like that on here. And then this one here is the right-hand one. That's going to go like, on, like that, um, just so you have these notches on the outside, obviously but I'm not going to use those. I'm going to use these ones and these, these can go on either side. So what we're going to want is to have them connected like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is screw this hole here in through the top like that. And we are again going to use these M3 by 10 socket screws. Um, and it's up to you whether you want to use a washer on these. I don't really use a washer on these, but you have them. You have enough there if you want. So that's just going to go through there like that. And then we're going to take these M3 locking nuts. So with a little plastic bit in there. And we're going to put that through there. And put the M3 locking nut on this side. And then I'm just going to use a pair of pliers. Hold onto that. Two and a half mil driver. And then just have that reasonably secure. You still want this to be able to move a bit, um, but you can see that's holding that on there pretty pretty well. Um, so that will enable that to move a little bit. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And then if we fold these arms down over here, like so, then we can complete this with... Oh, a washer and another M3 by 10 socket. Screw like this, two and a half mil driver into the side like that. And then same thing on the other side. And again, I like to have, you've got two sides. You've got the sort of dull, dull side where you can see the, the cutouts from the machine and then you've got the shinier side. I like to have the shinier side facing the carbon because it's a bit smoother and it doesn't cut it up as much. And then that can go in there, like that. And 
and then you have your mount and that you can see moves like this and again you can adjust so the, the stiffness on here I like to have it quite stiff um, but that you can see you can move throughout the full range here and when you have it flat these these sort of hit here to uh, keep it super solid when it's flat you can see the arms are actually going into the top plate there when it folds in it's very satisfying and that gives it that nice low profile and you can see those are coming into there now what we're going to do finally is apply the foam laser cut pad and I like to use a pair of tweezers just to really get this off because it can be a little bit tricky to get separate the paper bit from the sticky bit but there we go I've got it there once you've got it it should just peel everything away and then you're going to try and align this as well as possible like that and then press it into place and I would really advise you spend your time lining this up as well as possible because the glue is very sticky and you're not getting it off once you put it back on there uh, it'll be peeling off and it'll be a mess so try and get it right the first time there we go that's pretty good and then everything's flush and you've got your quarter 20 slot in there and you can mount your camera on and then this pad will make sure it doesn't move around when you tighten it all up and we want to do the same thing on the bottom with these two pads here there we go and just align them up it doesn't matter which side they go they're identical just line them up around the holes and that just keeps it nice and secure and grippy on the top plate of whichever drone you're mounting it on and also stops uh, these sort of um, scratching up any of the carbon uh, but mostly for grip that's the most important thing so it makes it super super solid if you mount it securely it'll be uh, very solid and same with the camera and then that's fully assembled that's your KD camera mount and you can put it at whatever angle you like so let's say let's say we want something like something like that um, and obviously if you have the notched ones um, this you don't use the washer um, on this one here same for the other side and this uh, screw head will just sit in one of these four notches or you can use the washer with this and it'll sit over the top but again, I prefer these ones uh, because they're a little bit stronger, um, but these ones may be a little bit more convenient for some of you. And then obviously you can have your zero degrees there as well, and that's zero degrees. And these go up to about 43 degrees or so at the max. Uh, but let's say we want it about there. We're just gonna tighten up these four screws. So this, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And then that is very, very strong. And that will take a decent payload. Um, and it's very stiff. And it performs really well. And there you go. There's your fully assembled KD mount. So the rest of these parts here are just spares. Um, you've got your camera mount. And then to mount this onto the drone, you've got two types of M4 screws. Uh, you've got 10 millimeter ones and eight millimeter ones, just depending on the thickness of the top plate you're mounting it to. And these simply go in here like this. And then they mount through onto any plate. Um, and then it uses the same two and a half mil driver um, as these. And you've got a slot here so that you can put the driver through and also a hole here so you can put the driver through um, so you don't have to take it apart when you're mounting on a drone. It's very easy to do. And it just goes on just like that. 